Hi, my name is Barry Sterling Mitchell. Today is August 9th, 2023, and this is Ben and Barry on football. What's going on out there, folks? This is Ben Dickerson. I'm your co-host. The preseason is now upon us. Won't be long before we have some real, genuine NFL football on the docket. Uh, this is actually week one of the preseason, if we don't count that Hall of Fame game last week. So there'll be plenty of games to watch. Everybody get a chance to take a look at their favorite teams. Yeah, Benny, you know, we've done some some serious uh, work in terms of who's who, you know, coming into this preseason. Uh, one of the things that we normally do, and we'll this will be coming out soon, will be where we do the best job in the NFL, backup quarterback. But we take a hard look at the backup quarterbacks. And we have one little thing that we'll talk about, which is almost historic. Nobody's ever seen this before relative to the posting of a depth chart. <laughs> so we're going to take a look at a few different things. So today's going to be a fun day. Let's jump right into the hot topics and current events and see what we got. Well, Benny, going back to last week, let's just remind everybody that um, last weekend was the Hall of Fame weekend. And we took a closer look at the class of 2023 last week. And we found some stunning information about some of these guys and, and some things that really were a sign of the times when you come to like Ken Johnson coming out as a, uh, his name, last name Johnson, I hope I got that right. Um, coming out of Florida A&M as a quarterback and then Riley convert to a, a defensive back. Um, things of that nature. So I invite everybody to take a look at, at the video. This is at our Facebook page of Ben and Barry on football at BNBOF. So, um, you know, what, what did you think about, let's, let's talk about the hall. Well, before we go into the hall of fame speeches, I do want to mention that there was the show hall of fame Knox first before they even got a chance to be, um, on the stage and get their gold jacket. Somebody had to come and let them know about it. It used to be where they were in some hotel room and the, the big guy would come along and boom, 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 you know, and everybody was waiting for that knock. Um, now they go to their homes. And, and I had a particular thought about it, but before I say what I wanted, you know, what I want to say about it, because mine's is a little off of football. What did you, did you get a chance to watch the Hall of Fame knocks? Uh, yeah, I did watch the Knox. Uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, of course, you know, some of these guys kind of get a good feeling about uh, whether or not they're going to go in. I mean, they watch TV just like the rest of us. Uh, they know when they're on the ballot. Uh, it's just a matter of waiting it out to see if they make to be a finalist. But uh, it's kind of neat to have somebody come and knock on your door at your house and, and surprise you and really look surprised. Uh, I, I will say Cleco looked pretty surprised when Joe Namath knocked on his door. And I think Rondé kind of looked surprised. I, it's hard to say, man. It's, it's hard to say. But the bottom line is the fact that they come to your house, I think is kind of neat as opposed to having you all holed up in a, in a hotel room. <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? Because if you don't get the knock, would he just pack your back and leave? Yeah, you know what I'm That's saying? That's kind of corny. You know? Um, in addition to the whole thing, well, first of all, two things. A, Steve Weiss is all in it. <laughs> you know? And, you know, there is a... Um, a uh, Hall of NFL or Pro Football Hall of Fame Broadcasters Award, you know? Right. Um, and, and so, the, you know, um, what's his name who did all of the film vocals back in the day? Um, he's in there. Uh, the guy that used to be the the the, the uh, newsman in Philadelphia. John Facenda. John Facenda, that great voice that John Facenda had um, as, na as a narrator. Um so, you know, Steve Weiss is in there because he's he's there interviewing everybody. He's on that Knox tour with those guys. So he's 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 getting a chance to speak to all of them and interview them particularly. What I 
<laughs> what I like about it even more, remember MTV Cribs? Yeah. One of the things I didn't like about MTV Cribs is everybody had a picture of Tony Montana sitting up. <laughs> I'm like, come on, y'all. You know what I mean? Everybody had a picture of Tony Montana sitting up there. But it was nice to see the houses that these guys is living in, you know, as they're suffering the weight of finding that they're going to get into the Hall of Fame. Maybe I'll go in the back and sit by the pool for a few minutes or, or, or go hit the tennis ball at my private court, you know, or something like that. Some of these houses was really nice, man. You know? Yeah, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears went into those nice houses. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I talked to a young man today. Uh, funny enough, I'm going to mention him on the show. I'm not going to mention his name because I didn't get his permission. But he's an electrician, but he played in the tackle football league that my son Chris played in when he was with the Piranhas. So I have him out as an electrician giving me some estimates. We get to talking and boom, he knows Christopher, <laughs> right? right? Everybody knows knows Christopher. But um. He was saying, you know, he reminded me of what we were talking about last week when we were some questioning. Uh, so these guys, you know, do they are they really Hall of Famers? You know what I mean? And he kept talking about impact. He's like, uh, who, who who was it that came out of uh, Miami? The linebacker. Zach Thomas. Zach, you know, he kept saying he didn't have no impact. You know, he had to have somebody had impact. All right. First of all, how old is this guy? Chris H. Okay, so he don't know. <laughs> that, that's, that's what I've been doing lately. I get into these conversations with these young guys, especially Eagles fans, but we won't even get into that, about this and that in the NFL. And the first thing I, I'm like, dude, how old are you? You ain't seen nothing. <laughs> you haven't been around. What do you, how do you know? Well, well, first of all, my thing was, Zach was a linebacker. Right. You know what I mean, so what type of – I mean, did he have to, you know, get an interception and take it back for a touchdown for you to say that he had an impact? He might have done that a few times, you know what I mean? But overall, he probably crushed three, four, third down, critical third downs and things of that nature that don't carry the type of, quote, impact, you know, that somebody who, you know, catches the bomb to win the game, you know what I mean? In, in the closing seconds of the game type of thing. So, you know, um, and then some of these guys, again, the Hall of um, again, even with my man from Florida a and just, you know, he had spectacular numbers, but look how long it took for them to recognize that. But just right. the fact that they did, and it, again, raised the, the, the realities of what these guys were doing or having to put up with coming out of, let's say Florida a and or, or uh, HBCU as a quarterback, you know, because every HBCU team had to have a quarterback, you know, so how many HBCU teams are out there? <clears throat> and But they could not get a quarterback position in the NFL. That's just how racism and supremacy worked at that particular time. And But in order to get into the NFL, they made the, the adjustment. And I thought to myself, and I think I said it last week, if he came out of Florida a and as a quarterback and in his rookie year was returning kickoffs for touchdowns, was this guy Michael Vick before Michael Vick? We just never knew <laughs> because he didn't get a chance to play. Well, you know well, what the, I mean? The only way he would get to answer that is if you could find some Florida a and tape from back when he played to see. Because it, it's obvious that he, if he could easily transition – to a kick returner and a star defensive back that just goes to show what type of an athlete the guy was. So there is a good chance that he was a mobile quarterback. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know? Um, so in any event, yeah, I, uh, I, I enjoyed the, uh, the knocks uh, and, and everything else. What else do we have here? Um, Marv Levy, the oldest living member of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. I think he's like 98 or something like that, man. So, I, you know, he should get his, his kudos, no doubt about it. Um, 
And then we had the 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 the, the crazy stat. Now Joe Thomas, uh, an offensive tackle, you know, um, who's known for playing at a level of excellence, ten thousand three hundred sixty three consecutive snaps. Okay, that's insane. That's insane. In the entirety of, but not one single snap came in the postseason. He never got to taste the postseason. Now check the list of people in that category: Dick Butkus and Gail Sayers, right? Our favorite running back, Larry Wilson and Floyd Little as the only Hall of Famers to never make it past regular season football. That's crazy. Is that amazing or what, you know? So congratulations to new Hall of Famer, Joe Thomas. So, Benny, just real quick, the question has come up about how many teams will carry three quarterbacks now that they have this new um, rolling for carrying three quarterbacks and you might understand the ruling a little better than me i just know that before if you had three quarterbacks you you, you like lost the roster spot or something like that you know and now they're you know you're able to to do that and somehow get some level of grace but i don't know exactly how that works technically do you well i don't i don't i wouldn't consider it losing a roster spot there's there's just a special teamer or another skill position player that you would have to eliminate to make room for that third quarterback. And that special teamer or uh, backup guy would probably be needed way before that third quarterback was needed. I think analytically speaking, the reason that most teams didn't carry three quarterbacks was because you hardly ever got to the third guy. Just, I actually read in an article they said there's a philosophy among coaches that if you're down two quarterbacks, you're probably out of the game. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Probably. Probably. But but as the as as teams have found out, like the 49ers, if two guy it is a possibility that two guys can go down early in a game where there's still enough time left in the game for you to possibly make a comeback if, in fact, you have a a competent person to put in that spot. It's just that it rarely, rarely happens. But, I mean, it's football, so it can happen. And the the problem is, during the regular season, you probably just take the L. But if it happens in a playoff game, then you're kicking yourself and you wish you had that guy. But then again, that third string guy probably ain't going to bring you back and win the game for you anyway. That's why he's third string. Let me ask you a question. I don't remember this, but when the Niners were playing the Eagles, what was the status of Garoppolo? Was he there? Was he out? He was out. He was he in was, street clothes, I'm pretty sure. He was in street clothes. Was that was that because they just didn't want to dress him? Because I know at one point he was like persona non grata, like he was kind of not there anymore, you know? And, but if was he possibly available to the to the Niners? If my memory serves me correctly, I don't think he was available for that game. Okay. Okay. I, I, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay, that was a question that came up, so I just okay. thought I'd throw I don't, that out I don't, there. I don't really concrete remember that or not. I kind of remember seeing him in street clothes on the sideline. I'm, I'm fairly sure, but besides that, I mean, if you keep a third quarterback and the guy never steps on the field the entire season, that could have been a guy running down on kickoffs, so you didn't have to use a starter there or a second string guy there. You know what I mean? That could have been your your third string safety. That could have been a backup linebacker. That they couldn't fit on the roster because they kept the guy that never stepped on the field the entire year. Well, either that or you know what other player that's normally on the roster, like Christian McCaffrey, for example, could you have 
set up so that he could run some type of an offense in an emergency. Well, you have to prepare for that. Well, if that's you what decide, I'm... You, you, first of all, you have to have that kind of play. Second yes. of all, you have to prepare for that. Yes. That's a portion of every practice, every week, for 18 weeks to prepare for that. Yep. That's right. That's right. If you, if you decide you're going to go with two QBs, then that's what you need to do. First, you got to have the guy. Second, you have to have the guy prepared. You have to have the entire offense prepared. I mean, you know, the the, the you he can run the wildcat and he can throw the ball. You know, in right. our case, now like you said, you got to have a guy that can do it. And I think and we had the guy that, that could, could do probably it. do it. The question is, are they prepared to do? It? You can't well, just say, and, and, "Yo, you're fast. Go run the wildcat." That's yeah, no, I understand what you're saying. And, um, and you're absolutely correct. I don't think we were prepared because we did have, was it Josh Johnson or whatever his name was? He actually, you know, he was there. Um, he yeah, was, but he's a he's a pocket passer. Yeah, well, he and he was the backup. He was actually number two, I think. So he would be the guy that came in after Purdy because I don't think um, Trey was ready either at that particular point, right? So he was still on the injured list. In any event, I don't know how many teams will carry three quarterbacks on their 53-man roster. Could be one of the teams that has a rookie that's not quite ready yet, you know? So we'll, we'll keep an eye on that to see how that works. So we were looking, Ben, for a USFL player. We were seeing so many XFL players who were getting shots in the NFL. And just so happened that this, I saw this article and it wasn't particularly about Brandon Aubrey from the USFL, but after um, Tristan Vizcaino was cut, they, he found himself as the only kicker on the roster. So Mr. Um, uh, Aubrey now is, is, uh, the only kicker on the Dallas Cowboys roster, I'm sure they'll find somebody to give him some uh, some competition. But the main thing is congratulations to him for making that for getting the opportunity to move from the USFL to the NFL. So we were just congratulating everybody else. <laughs> so what I heard is they actually like this guy. Yeah, uh, he was 14 to 15 last season for Birmingham in real games, but he's only two of seven in practice that particular day that they decided to get rid of the other guy. So if he's only two for seven that day, but they kept him and got rid of the other guy, that tells me that they feel like this guy, maybe he's got some nerves or something and they like his stroke. They like the way he looks. They like his confidence and they want to give him a little bit further shot. Now you're probably right. They may bring in somebody else. They might bring in two more guys, you know, because competition for kicker goes on all year long, usually, you know, unless the guy's hot and he's rolling, you know, if he misses one here and there, there's no worries. But if he misses a couple extra points or misses like a, a makeable, like 42 yard or something. Oh yeah. They bring another guy in the camp. Absolutely. So, Absolutely, man. And kick so his maybe if this guy gets, gets the, the nerves off and he starts making them in practice, they'll keep all right. Well, we'll keep an eye on Brandon Aubrey. All right, Betty. You had your shot. Let's talk about it. Here's your top 10 out of the NFL top 100 players. Before we do the top 10, let's just talk about the top 100 list in general. You had a chance to look at it? Yeah. And again, okay. I have the fantasy football thing up here. So I know fantasy, when you see top 100, fantasy falls in there somewhere. So as you, and whatever comments you have, try to just throw some fantasy in there for the, for the peepers. Well, obviously fantasy football, uh, individual defensive players, they have particular fantasy football leagues where you're allowed to actually roster one individual defensive player. But most leagues don't use defensive players. They use entire defenses. And they don't use linemen in fantasy football either. So if you exclude all of them and then you look at your list, where these guys fall as far – and believe me, this is a list that's made up by the players. 
So you got to kind of respect it a little bit because you, you want to feel like the players would know. But then again, you also have to think about it. there's a little bias in there. Some guys like guys. Some guys look, don't like certain guys. So that could move you up and down a couple of spots. Um, there were some names I can't think off the top of my head right now, but I, I was watching the program, and some people were surprised that there were a couple guys that didn't show up on the list at all, but they're kind of rising stars, so to speak, up-and-comers that will probably get their first shot on the list next season. Um, but I didn't have too much trouble with the list. I mean, it's a long list. It's 100 players. I think Saquon could have been higher. I believe he fell at number 30. I thought he would be in the 20s, so he was close. Uh, I thought Josh Jacobs, Josh Jacobs would be a little higher, considering he led the league in rushing last year and looked really good doing it. Um, so, and that's the other thing. You know, we're talking about voters, Okay. So some people vote with their heads. Some people vote with their hearts. Some people vote and think about careers. Some people vote and think about what have you done for me lately? You know what I mean? So there's, there's, there's a lot of variables. But I didn't have too much trouble with the list. But that top 10, I had changed that a little bit. So let's, let's go back to the top 10 here. I hear you. I hear you talking about it. Let's, let's hit it. And let's see. First off, the top 10 from the NFL Top 100 came in at number 10, Chris Jones from the Chiefs, nine, Michael Parsons, eight, Josh Allen, quarterback, Buffalo Bills, seven, Tyreek Hill, six, Joe Burrow, five, Travis Kelsey, four, Nick Bosa, three, Jalen Hurts, two, Justin Jefferson, and one, Patrick Mahomes. So that's the NFL as they voted in the top 100 and it came down to the top 10. However, Mr. Dickerson has his own top 10 here. You want to, you want to tell us a little bit about this? Okay. So Mr. Mahomes is number one. I cannot argue that I've tried to argue it in the past and it hasn't come out too well for me. And <laughs> he, keeps, he keeps proving himself. So I'm going to leave that alone. I have no problem with Patrick Mahomes at number one. However, number two is Joe Burrow. I don't know what this guy has to do. First of all, he goes into Arrowhead. He beats Mahomes. He's been to a Super Bowl already, a winnable Super Bowl that he almost pulled out at the end if you go back and watch that game. The next thing is he came into the league at the same time as Justin Hurts, J uh, Jalen Hurts. I keep calling him Justin. I don't know why I like to call him Justin. Jalen Hurts. Having Jalen Hurts at number three, I don't think that's cool, man. And Burrow under him, that's not cool at all. They both hit the league at the same time. Burrow hit the ground running. Proved himself to be an NFL-quality quarterback and an elite quarterback basically from day one. In the three years that they've both been in the league, Burrow's thrown for 4,000 more yards. That's not that's that's not a mere pittance. Now people say, well, you know, Wentz was there and and Hurts didn't start right away and all that. Okay, so what? If they thought he was going to be that good, they just start him right away. And from what I saw from the first year that he did start, he just started off just as slow, if not slower. Burrow hit the ground running. This guy is a machine as a quarterback. People are really expecting big things from him, and he hasn't gotten paid yet. He waited till Justin Herbert and all those other guys got those contracts. He's going to break all those contracts. He's going to be the highest paid player in the NFL once he finally signs, and he will deserve it. But I'm just, you know, I used Hurts as an example because they had Hurts ahead of him, and they both play the same position. 4K more. I think that's significant. Uh, so I got Burrow number two. Number three, Justin Jefferson. Fantasy guys will give me the nod on this one. Right now, as far as ADP, which is average draft position in most fantasy drafts, Justin Jefferson is either number one or number two. Over Mahomes, over Burrow, over McCaffrey, over all these guys. People are picking Justin Jefferson as the very 
first pick in a lot of fantasy drafts. This guy is tremendous, and he's going to stay tremendous as long as he's uh, as as dominant as he's been. Very hard cover. Can't double him. Guys, he's trouble. And as long as Cousins keeps getting him the ball at the volume that he's giving him, he should stay up there. I had to get a defensive player up a little bit higher. Had to push Nick Bosa up. I think that's uh, – they got him at four. Oh, no, I kept him at four. Nick Bosa belongs there. No doubt about it. I'm always going to put offensive players ahead of defensive players. I'm sorry. But Nick Bosa <laughs> is a dominant, dominant player at his position. Probably – this could be slightly argued, I think. But he's probably, in my eyes, he's the best defensive player in the league right now. Okay. At a dominant position, which is edge rusher or outside linebacker, or whatever you want to call him, technically, he rushes the passer. And this guy's tremendous. Then at number five, they had Travis Kelsey. But because I demoted Jalen Hurts, I had to get him in there. <laughs> because No, no doubt about it. The guy was really great last season. The season before, he was very mediocre. There were a lot of questions coming into 2022. And Jalen Hurts proved that he earned to, uh, the right to be an MVP candidate. The, the difference between 2021 and 2022 was tremendous. He took a gigantic leap, a gigantic leap. So I cannot not give him credit for that. So I've got him at number five. Number six, they had Joe Burrow down at number six. That's way too low. But number six, I had to put another dominant receiver, Tyreek Hill. Now, first thing people are going to say is, well, what about Diggs? What about Devontae Adams? What about Jamar Chase? I hear you. I hear you. Go back and look at Tyreek Hill's numbers from last season. He almost had 2,000 yards receiving. He was really, really close. This guy is unguardable. If Tua doesn't go down and stays hot, he probably cracks two grand. That's crazy. Tyreek Hill is a problem. Travis Kelsey, best tight end in the league, hands down. I got him in number seven. Uh, number eight, the second best defensive player in the league is Micah Parsons. I know there's a lot of cowboy hate out there, especially in the city that we live in, but Micah Parsons is a freak. He's almost unblockable too. And he moves around a lot more than Bosa does. And he can cover. So Micah Parsons deserves to be on the list. I got him at number eight. Number nine, I'm tired of people crapping on my man Josh Jacobs. Led the league in rushing last year. Been on a bad team for many, many years and still gets his numbers up there, still gets the job done. And number 10, offensive players, offensive linemen don't get love. Got to give love to the most dominant offensive lineman in the league. That's Trent Williams. Very interesting. Very. Interesting. However, he wasn't my number 10. He was not? Oh, yes, he was my number 10. Yeah, I mixed my list up. Yes, I had to get Trent Williams up there. I dropped Chris Jones out. I couldn't remember who I dropped out. Okay. Yeah, I dropped out Chris Jones. Okay. Chris Jones, I couldn't keep Chris Jones in there because Bosa and Parsons are both better than him. Sorry. <laughs> all right. All right. Well, that's, hey, look, that's, uh, you know, that's that's uh, an interesting rundown. Um, you know, I got to like the fact that you have two Niners in the top 10. That's always a beautiful thing. Um, Mahomes is, is a freak. Uh, you know, in terms of his just so many skills and so many abilities to do things, that that whole baseball thing, just did did Burrow play baseball at all? Burrow, uh, I I I don't, I don't know. remember that being in his background. I don't remember that. Yeah, yeah, I don't remember. I that. mean, it's it's a good possibility. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Most of these guys in high school they played more than one sport. Yeah, baseball or basketball right. usually, especially about yeah, you're absolutely right, you're absolutely right. All right, so that was fun looking at the top 10. So, Benny, let's do a quick look at the schedule. The schedule. First off, we have football Thursday, 
Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. <laughs> so we're about to get our football thing on. Two, two games Thursday, Houston at New England and Minnesota at Seattle. So this is, this is, again, what we were talking about, the best job in the NFL backup quarterbacks is one of the reasons that I have not uh, posited it yet because I'm going to wait for the preseason. We're going to see who battles out and actually make it, becomes the backup quarterback. Might be some surprises. We'll see a lot of those guys in these games. Now, I want to mention something real quick. I was listening to Kyle Shanahan talk about the preseason games versus – these um, scrimmages where they bring in a team, other teams, and they kind of, you know, have these controlled scrimmages. Right. Apparently he feels as if he would prefer to keep, let his stars play in the controlled scrimmages and not yes. the preseason games. Right. Because you can control it. So you've, you've seen this, who, who else is doing this? Is, you know, I don't think this is, uh, I this, think most teams are probably doing it. Most teams? Yeah. So we're gonna, now, I did hear about a couple teams that were talking about playing their starter uh, at some point in the preseason. I don't even know if Kyle Shannon's going to play anybody in the real preseason. That's I doubt it. Yeah, it's, that's what it's seeming like. Now, now Roger said he wants to play a little bit in the preseason. That um, doesn't mean he will. but doesn't mean he will. Um but you have some situations like that where you have either a, a new um, quarterback, you know what I mean, or something like that that really needs to gel, you know, right. under fire to some degree. Right. Um, Houston has such a player in C.J. Stroud. Right. Oh, so C.J. is going to get a chance to play. But I'm, you know, I'm a C.J. Stroud fan. I was a guy who, you know, thought he should have went first, you know. But uh, we shall see. And then Mac Jones, uh, as they, as Mac and Cheese, as Cam used to call him, uh, is now under a new offensive coordinator. So I don't know how much they're going to actually uh, play Mac Jones. But, uh, you know, that's going to be interesting to take a look at. Minnesota, uh, Kirk Cousins, don't know if he's going to play at all. Uh, and Seattle, I don't think that um, the starter is going to play there either. They still have Seattle. Still has um, who's the quarterback? Drew, Drew 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 Lock is he still there backing? Drew Lock is the backup. Yes, he's the backup. Okay, so Drew, you know it's funny. I used, when I, when I watch preseason games and they bring in some of these backups who were starters, and they come in and they look so good in the preseason. I always think it's really interesting because you can almost expect it. You know, I mean, this guy you know was a starter, so he should be able to go in. And play well against a lot of the non-starters. The guy's been around. He's got a command of the offense. He gets more reps than the other guys. You know, the starters get the most reps. The backups get the next most reps. And if they got a third or fourth guy because it's still early in, in camp, they get fewer and fewer and fewer reps. So when you throw them into a preseason game, they're going to look a little shaky. Whereas a guy like Drew Locke that's been around knows the offense. The only thing that's going to mess him up is – He's not playing with starters. That's the other problem with playing your starting quarterback. If you play your starting quarterback, if Aaron Rodgers insists on getting in a preseason game, they got to put the whole starting offense out there. You're not going to put backup offensive linemen out there with him because if he gets hurt, you're going to commit suicide. <laughs> so you get now he's forcing you to play your entire starting offense. Well, Friday, we have one, two, three, four, six matchups, uh, four at seven, one at 7.30, and one at 10. So I don't know how we're going to do that. You see all of them. But when you're talking about um, are we going to play a starting quarterback, in Green Bay, we have a guy who's starting in place of Van Rodgers who's been there for a number of years and is finally getting a chance. And I'm not sure off the top of my head who the backup in Cincinnati is, but I'm assuming Joe Burrow is not going to be out there. He already has a calf strain, so he already has a boo-boo. I don't think he's going to be out there. Yeah, we won't see him till week one. So uh, that's going to be interesting to see how that goes. Um, Daniel Jones and and Goff, Jared Goff uh, of Detroit, both quarterbacks, 
Will, will, you, will you see Daniel Jones at all? Nope. Don't think so, eh? Not in this one. You got to remember, this is the first preseason game. They got like 90 dudes on the team. They got eventually in a couple of weeks cut down to 53. So they got plenty of other people to put out there that they have to make decisions on rather than run your start quarterback out there. Now it's possible that next week in the second preseason game, we see a few more starters play at least a series or whatever. But this first week, the only guys you're going to see maybe is you'll see Jordan Love most likely. You'll see C.J. Stroud. Uh, you'll see Bryce Young from Carolina. Those guys, they'll probably get a shot. And if they don't play this week, they'll 100% play next week. Well, um, that brings up a point. I did hear one coach talk about his philosophy was to play his starters in the first game of the preseason. And I think just he just wanted to get it out the way. And, and you know, it's just that. I don't remember off the top of my head, but I remember hearing a coach say that because it struck me. And I always kind of thought, well, if you're going to play him in the preseason, if he does have some type of a boo-boo, you know what I mean, uh, uh, barring a, a, a major injury that would keep him out a week or two, you would want that to happen early in the preseason so he'd have time to get over it as opposed to the week before the season starts and now he's got a gimpy ankle and he hasn't had but a, you know, a, a week or so to get it ready. So it's interesting that there are some coaches out there who have a slightly different philosophy as to when they want to play their starters. If they, and again, Kyle Shanahan is not going to play him at all if they play him at all. And uh, we, we, you know, remind people that we do call the first quarter of the regular NFL season, the second preseason. With Sean Payton. Ha <laughs> ha, there you go. He's going to put Russell Wilson out there in the first game. There you go. <laughs> I knew I heard it. I knew I heard it. So <laughs> Sean Payton. And then, <clears throat> for example, in Washington, you've got some questions at quarterback. We'll see how, who, you know, who shows up then. Uh, Arizona, uh, you're probably going to see Colt McCoy because I don't think that. Uh, no, nah, Kyler's not ready. Kyler's not ready yet anyway. God, they wouldn't play Kyler anyway. So. He's coming off an injury. Who who has questions about uh, the commander's quarterback? I think I've just read general questions. People had some questions. You think it's it's uh, uh, the media has questions. The fans have questions. I don't think the coaching staff does. Sam Howell is their guy. Speaking of, just quickly, I understand um, there's some. Uh, Turbulence in Washington with the way Eric Bieniemy is coaching. Uh, uh, <laughs> I was wondering if this was going to come up. <laughs> I'm on it, Benny. I'm on it all. I'm checking it all out. <laughs> so I don't know if you remember or not, but if you watch Speak, some months ago, when there was, you know, coaches were interviewing for jobs. And the enemy was, you know, trying to get a head coaching job. And he got turned down for like the 20th time or his 20th interview or whatever. And Shady McCoy went on television and said, there's a reason why he can't get a head coaching job because he doesn't interact well with the players and blah, blah, blah. And people jumped on him about that. Mahomes said something. Tyreek Hill said something. Travis Kelsey said something. They said, we all love it. He's a great coach. We love it. So he had to eat crow a little bit. Now, Shady's in his glory now. Now he's going like this. See, I told you. I told you so. Oh, he's in his glory now. He's like, see, I told you. I told you so. So, um. No, it, 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 he didn't really elaborate. Apparently, that that some of them are, apparently are saying that I, I don't know if they think he's pushing them too hard, coaching them too hard. See, we don't know what guy said specifically, but I know Ron Revere was on TV today 
apologizing, saying he put his foot in his mouth. I wasn't sure what he was apologizing for. What did he say? Well, this is the thing. These instances where supposedly players went to Rivera and said, hey, you know, the enemy's out of pocket. He's yelling at us. He's cursing. At us. He's he's coaching us really hard. This happened early on, and it's already been addressed. And supposedly everybody's cool now, but they're making it sound like it just happened yesterday. Okay. So he's apologizing because he realizes now that's a keep it in the house kind of thing. Keep that in house. You don't go to the media and say. Yeah, I had some players come to me and say they thought Eric B. Enemy was coaching them really hard, but I just told them to go back and talk to him and work it out with him. That You don't say that. You know they're going to take that and run with it. Now he's sorry he said it, and he's trying to backtrack. Oh, that doesn't okay. mean it didn't happen. It probably did happen. Supposedly, he's a very vocal coach. Even the media was saying before they knew that players complained about him, they're like, he's the one coach you can constantly hear during the practices. He's louder than everybody else, and he's talking more than all the other coaches. That, that's just his stop. That's what he does. You know, he's trying to get the best out of his players. All right. Well, we'll see how that all unfolds. Saturday, two, four, six games again. Indianapolis at Buffalo, Tennessee at Chicago. The Jets at Carolina, Jacksonville at Dallas, Philly at Baltimore, and the Chargers at the Rams. Uh, we That's two 1 o'clock games, a 4 o'clock, a 5 o'clock, a 7 o'clock, and a 9 o'clock game. NFL Network's going to be carrying four of them. Indianapolis, rookie quarterback. Well, we don't know who the who the quarterback's going to be yet. We don't know if it's going to be <clears throat> Minshew or Richards Richardson. Um, there's still a question there, and then Buffalo. So I guess you mean Josh Allen? Well, um, is he going to get any time? You think? No, Josh Allen, no time at all. No, Tennessee. You got now. Tennessee's interesting because. Um, you have Malik Willis, and you have well, who's the new rookie that got it drafted? Um, Levis. Say his full name again. Uh, uh, Will Levis. Will Levis, absolutely. So we'll have an opportunity to see one or both of those guys. Um, more than likely, more than Tannehill. Uh, and then in Chicago, Justin Fields probably won't play. Um, so I'm not sure who the backup is. We got to really get our backup game here because they're going to have a few. Yeah, well, at this point, I think most teams are probably carrying like four quarterbacks. <laughs> yeah, you're probably so right. We'll get to see, we'll get to see who, who's there, and we'll get to figure out who won't be there by the end of the weekend, <laughs> you know. But, um, yeah, you, you can kind of go down the list and kind of figure things out. Now, with the Colts, it'll be interesting to see – if they start the rookie and then bring in Mincu, or if they start Mincu and then bring in the rookie. The only reason I say that is because I'm sure they want to give the rookie as many game reps as they can, but I don't know to what extent he knows the offense. Of course, it's going to be pretty vanilla and all that. You know, It'll be pared down. It's just the first preseason game. But his command of the offense probably will have a lot to do with it. Um, and then, of course, they, their third-string guy, Sam Ellinger, a player who's been there for a few years now as a backup. So he's got to get his time in, too, you know. So that'll be interesting to see which one of those guys kind of starts and which one comes in in relief. Um, usually the relief guy comes in with a bunch of second stringers. I would think – See, again, here's the problem. If you know that either Richardson or Minshew is going to be your starter for the season, you almost and, – and you want to play them both, you're almost forced to play your starting offensive line. You know what I mean? It's kind of eh, 
You know, some of these other teams, like the Jets, they could start their whole second string. Just start them all. Because they know they weren't going to play Rodgers in that first game. They knew Sauce wasn't going to play. They knew Garrett Wilson wasn't going to play. They'd already determined that. So there's no need to worry. It's, well, it's, it's always better when you, you know, when you don't go in in, in an indecisive manner. So you make your decision right. and, and, and that's done. Um, Jackson. But if they start Mincy and play him and they don't play Richardson, first of all, it's going to piss Mincy off. And second of all, it kind of just slaps the backup label right on it. And as far as he's concerned, it's still a competition. <laughs> so that's why I say that particular game, that particular team, that's going to be interesting to see what they did. Who's the backup in Philadelphia now? I can't think. And what makes it so bad, um, I remember I remember when he was chosen that I was thinking that was a pretty good choice, and I don't remember who it is. Oh, it's Mariota. Mariota. Same capability style running, you know, ability to run and all of that kind of stuff. Ran a little too much down there in uh, in Atlanta. Had no choice. Well, I don't know about that. Who's he going to throw it to? Whoever was open. But I don't know if he oh, Okay, that's a good answer. Even a chance that's a good do. answer, whoever was open. <laughs> well, you know, he, 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 he once he left, the, the quarterback that came in behind him was throwing the ball to somebody. So, you know. They, Ritter? They, they, they didn't come in and do a whole bunch of running. Now, I don't know how they weren't. You sure you watched the Atlanta Falcons last year? You're talking about another team. <laughs> well, none of neither one of us could watch with so much of them. Just First of all, the guy they brought in was red, a rookie. Red zone. The guy that took over for him was a rookie last year. Right, I know. Yeah, he's a running quarterback. Well, he didn't do as much running. I don't think he did as much running as Mariota did. When, okay. I, when I watched Mariota, you know something? And you know what gave me that the thought? Quarterbacks, this the movie, the little show thing. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like Mariota's taking off here a lot, <laughs> especially for somebody with his level of experience. You know, I was surprised that he was running as much as he did with with his level of experience. Like you said, the rookie, I could see. Okay, he's you know he's not going to see it. Go ahead and run, et cetera, et cetera. But Mariota should be a little should have a little more field presence to to, to, play, to work from the pocket and get that pass off. And it wasn't happening. So that's going to be interesting to see how that works. Who's backing up my man, Lamar Jackson? He's not going to play. So, uh, but they they still have, um, I forget his name, but he was kind of kind of yeah, like still Lamar. There. He's still there. He's still there. So they, 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 they're pretty consistent there. Uh, the Chargers and the Rams coming in with their backups. Um, so we'll have to see, you know, who's that. But that's going to be the 9 o'clock game. Kansas City, New Orleans on Sunday. And they're going to cap it off with the Niners at the Raiders. I guess we won't see Garoppolo in this one. <laughs> I wouldn't put him out there. Hey, look, you know, not at all. Not at all, but maybe they will. Is if um, <laughs> if uh, Nick Bosa is still holding out, then he might have a he might have a shot to live if uh, they put him out there. If Nick Bosa's not out there, so they're not Somebody at all. Step on his foot. Yeah, it could happen. It could happen. But that would would wrap up the first week of first weekend, full weekend of of NFL preseason football. Um, looking forward to that, as a matter of fact. So that's some good stuff right there. Okay, so moving right along here, um, <clears throat> we want to say congrats to Richard Sherman, who <laughs> looks like he's going to take over as this other voice on Undisputed and debating Skip Bayless. So that's going to be an interesting situation. I don't see this lasting very long. You don't? <laughs> no, not at all. Why do you say that? Number one, they already had a major feud in the past. So supposedly they've gotten over it. It says it right there, to debate Skip Bayless after prior feud. It was pretty bad. Was it really? 
Richard Sherman ripped him a new one, man. <clears throat> he really let him have it. But evidently they kissed and made up. Bayless probably lied to him and told him, I'd love to have you on with me. I think we'll have a great show, blah, blah, blah. But he, I tell you what, Skip Bayless has a way of getting on people's nerves. And Shannon Sharp is one of the nicest, most even-tempered guys out there. Far more nice, or I'm sorry, I shouldn't say more nice, far nicer and more even-tempered than Richard Sherman. <laughs> and he even got under Shannon Sharp's skin. So we'll see. We'll see how this goes. Wow. Wow. I, and I had such high hopes. <laughs> I mean, it might start off well. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. All right. Next up. This is what I was talking about when I said they had never really seen this before. But on the depth chart at quarterback for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, they have Baker Mayfield or or Kyle Trask. Have you ever seen that on a depth chart, even in I've the never, preseason? I've never seen that on a depth chart. However, what that tells me is we got ourselves a real true competition here. When the team can't decide. Now, they sort of kind of made decision because Baker's on the list under the first stringers and Trask is on the list under the second stringers. But it, it's, it's, it's such a close race that it's almost like they felt obligated to let you know that Kyle Trask could end up being the starter. That's how mm -hmm. close it is. And I know a lot of players like Kyle Trask. Well, we talked about that when we did our brain trust, and I believe we included both players because we kind of anticipated that uh, going into this. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, but, yeah, we, I had never seen it so much so explicitly put. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's different. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. Teddy Two Gloves is uh, going over to the Lions. Jared Goff says he's going to pick Teddy's brain, and he's looking forward to t Teddy Bridgewater joining the roster. So you, you had some comments about Nate Sudfeld, Adrian Martinez, and Hendon Hooker. When I was saying it looked like they weren't getting it done if they brought Teddy Two Gloves in like that. What do you think? Well, when you say getting it done, what exactly do you mean getting it done? What You can't expect too much from these guys. First of all, Adrian Martinez is an undrafted free agent. They were not expecting to get nothing done with him. Hendon Hooker is a third-round draft pick. Not as low as we've seen some other guys come out and end up being good later, but He's a third round draft. He's a rookie. Nate Sudfeld has been on a few different teams, including the 49ers, and he hasn't gotten it done yet. There's no way he's going to get it done now. Jared Goff has resurrected his career since he left the, 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 uh, the Rams, having been to a Super Bowl with them. The Detroit Lions offense is clicking on all cylinders. And They've improved their defense. I'm not saying the defense is great because they were pretty bad last year. They gave up a lot of points. But they made a lot of changes. They put a lot of work into it to improve it. You cannot use any one of these guys to back up Jared Goff. That would be like throwing the season in the trash can if something was to happen to him. You have to have a competent backup. None of these guys are even close to being competent. They just don't have it. They just don't have the experience. Nate Sudfeld's been in the league for seven years, and he played in six actual games, and he never started in any of them. He's lucky to be getting a paycheck. Best job in the NFL.
Adrian Martinez, I can't even remember. I think he played in Nebraska or something. I mean, interesting player, but the fact that he didn't get drafted, undrafted free agent, that tells you a lot. Hendon Hooker is a dual threat quarterback who this team is not even, this offense is not even geared toward that type of a player. But everybody wants a dual threat quarterback, so they grab him. None of these guys are ready to back up anybody in the NFL game, especially an offense, a high-powered offense like the Lions. Yeah, why are they there? <laughs> you know, that's 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 my question. You know, well, why are they I, even there? I don't know why anybody would want Nate Sudfeld. <laughs> I I don't, I just don't. Okay, this Adrian is one of Martinez. the mysteries of that backup quarterback position. Well, well, I know why Hendon Hooker's there. Hendon Hooker's there because he was a pretty dynamic quarterback in college, and he's a dual threat quarterback. And every team in the NFL in the next year or two will have one. Every single team. So they're just jumping on the bandwagon and getting somebody that they can kind of slowly groom and get ready to switch their offense over. This, they're doing the same thing Shanahan did when he picked Trey Lance. Except he had higher hopes for Trey Lance to be ready sooner, but they're in no hurry to get Hendon Hooker ready. So you got to have a backup who you know can come in and run that offense. They they made the right choice as far as I'm concerned. Well, at least as far as Hendon Hooker is concerned. <laughs> you well, know? Like you said, why why is Nate Sudfeld there? They, you know, did you really think that I, Nate Sudfeld? I couldn't answer coming? that. You know, so but that's part of it. That's part of it. Benny, some bad news. Bashad Breeland. Did he play for the Ravens? Man, let me tell you something about Rashad Breland. Shrooms. They didn't even say mushrooms. They said shrooms. I, I'm like, what the hell is a shroom? Is it, <laughs> you know? And five pounds oh of meat. <laughs> two AK 47s, two AR 15s. What the? <sighs> 62 grams of suspected illegal mushrooms, five pounds of marijuana. Where, where the hell was he? And, and then they released him on $30,000 bonds. What is it, 10%? We had to come up with 3000 And a stolen car. And a stolen car. He played in the NFL for seven years. Commanders, Packers, Chiefs, Vikings. A Super Bowl champion. Come on, man. What's show is that with the come on man? <laughs> oh my gosh. Right. I I hear you, bro. Seven years of collecting NFL paychecks, and this is what it's come to. You can't wait. buy your own Mercedes. Wait, wait. Breland had agreed to a three-year deal in 2018 with the Panthers worth a total of $24 million, but the deal got nullified when he failed his physical. Man, <laughs> I love, I'm speechless. <laughs> I don't even. I don't even want to dignify that with a comment. Ah, gosh, you know. Well, let's talk about something a little more, um, a, a little more positive. Have you seen Pep Hamilton yet? On um, yeah. He got his yeah. chance to uh, to be on TV. What did you think about Pep? I thought he did really well. I think he is a wealth of knowledge. Really? Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna fit right in, just like Mooch and uh, some of the other ex coaches that are that are uh, on the network. I think uh, he won't have any problem fitting in there. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, I mean, I had some questions when you know when I was looking at when I was listening to him. I wondered if maybe he was a little too nice or something like that. Um, too nice? Yeah, you know, was, uh, he he didn't as sound far like as what? I mean, he didn't sound like he really wanted to be too critical of anybody. So, oh, he's 
No, why would he want to do that? Why would he want? Make- because that's 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 what you do. Now he's a he's a commentator now. He's an analysis. I mean, you got to get get into it. Shoot, what what that's happened the- with with the coach? <laughs> What's the name that now was coaching with uh, Denver? And he started talking about the previous coach. He said he still had a CBS hat on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Who does that? Yeah. You know what I mean? He, he does. comes on and starts talking about the previous coach. And the crazy thing is, if you really think about it, remember he said there was like 20 hands in this pot. So he wasn't just talking about that one coach. He threw a lot of it on him. He named his name. You know, and said a lot of the stuff that happened in Denver was his fault. But there were other people involved. And those other people, Are they're still, still there. there. They're still there. <laughs> so, you know, he kind of lost his mind for a second, man. Sean Payton went left. <laughs> he sure did. That's Sean Payton went But left. Pep is cool. Pep is like a player's coach. So he's not going to be too tough, at least not off the bat. Let him let him get his foot in the door and get settled in. And then if something comes up that he can sink his teeth into, I'm sure he will. All right. All right. Well, Benny, we're going to finish up here with one of your favorite things in football. Hard knocks. I like hard knocks. Did you see the first show? No, I did not. I was oh, watching man. something. I don't know what the heck I was watching. I but I'm probably going to let – I like to I like to, uh, I like to binge watch stuff. So I'll probably let it go for a couple episodes and then I'll jump on. Nah, man, you got to watch it, man, so we can talk about it show by show. Ah, okay, okay, okay. I will. <laughs> hey, Benny, the interesting thing was watching Aaron Rodgers with, with his coach's hat on. Because okay. he on when the Jets was looking good, and he he must have he must have had some kind of input until that deep throw that uh, the backup guy made. Yeah, he took credit for that. Yeah, yes. he had some kind of, and he was all happy about that. And the Jets really looked pretty good in the first half. Second half, though, <laughs> that them dudes ain't gonna be on that team. Half the guys are cut already. But I'm just saying, the coach's angst on Aaron Rodgers' face, <laughs> you know what I mean? It's one thing when your team's winning, you know what I mean? You want to your chest stuck out. Next thing you know, you're losing the game, and it's like, well, oh my God. You got to remember, the, the guy, the quarterback that started that game was a first-round draft pick. Yeah. Who's now been relegated to second string. So – you you expect a lot out of this guy. <laughs> well, the reason Aaron Rodgers is there is because what was being expected was not being delivered. In right, the and now he's season. getting another chance. So he's getting a chance. He ain't going to get but so many. But, uh, yeah, I, it was just fun watching Aaron Rodgers go from the proud coach with his chest stuck out to, oh, my God, what's going on here? <laughs> Yeah, right. That's why he probably won't ever be a coach. Ah, it's tough, man. It's tough to be a superstar and then go into coaching. Everybody that talks about that says that, you know, like Michael they, Jordan they, could never coach nobody because he'd be like, he'd be like Eric Bieniemy, be cowering at people. Yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> All you got to do is look look back at Magic Johnson's coaching career. That'll tell you. Oh, man. That he, was, was, he was horrible. He wore some great suits, though. <laughs> he, he was horrible. Oh my god! Oh my god! All right, we talked about Rashawn Breland. Thanks for following. Please leave comments and suggestions. Our motto is football is life. Our website is www.benandbarryonfootball.com. We have both a YouTube channel and we have a podcast where you can find on Spotify or wherever you get your podcast. Any last words, Benny? Um, yeah, I do have last words. I want to give kudos and 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 uh, make sure that people understand the respect I have for some of these uh, young ladies who are working on these sports channels that are really, really showing their stuff. And when I say showing their stuff, I don't mean. I'm sorry, that's a bad choice of words there. 
really, really showing their sports knowledge. Okay. Kimberly Martin. Kimmy Martin's love, back. Kimberly Martin is tough, man. She is I should a, say back. She never really left. She's been there the whole time. She never left. Right. She's a real insider. She I knows like the game. She knows players. Players and coaches talk to her. You know, she's she's a wealth of knowledge. She's doing really, really well. And of course, my girl Joy Taylor proves herself day after day after day on uh, the show Speak on FS1. Her opinion is well respected by the other people on the panel and by lots of folks out there, I'm sure, definitely by me. I love to listen to what she has to say. My favorite is Mina Kimes. Ooh, smart lady, smart. I mean, Mina gets into it. She's telling you whether the line, how they block in, and I mean, she's yeah. getting into it. And she knows basketball and baseball just as well. Okay, okay. She's, okay. Big, she's big time. Mina is awesome. I love Mina Kimes. This is all I want to say, Benny, is that right now, one of the free agents that are kind of out there talking to teams is Kareem Hunt. Yep. And one of the teams he's talking to is the Saints. Right. I've Kamara's always said that Sunday. Kareem Hunt reminded me of Alvin Kamara. Uh-huh. Can you imagine both of those guys in your backfield? Well, Kamara's a little smoother, but um, and probably a better pass catcher. <laughs> but, yeah, Kareem Hunt's – now, here's the thing. The Browns let Kareem Hunt go supposedly because they said he lost a step. Now, I don't know how he lost a step because he didn't get as much playing time as I thought he should have last season. But Nick Chubb was on a freaking roll, man. Nick Chubb was running people over like crazy. So I understand why they went with him. Nick Chubb right, was a better right. guy. I can see that No also. doubt about it. Yeah. But supposedly they said he lost some speed. Now, that remains to be seen. If, in fact, he does sign with the Saints, he'll get his chance right away because Kamara suspended for, like, the first three right, games. Right, exactly. So that wouldn't be a bad stop for him. And now that we're talking about running backs again, I just read something today that said there's a chance. Usually when the media says there's a chance, that means somebody heard something. They're saying there's a chance that the Raiders may rescind the franchise tag off of Josh Jacobs. If, in fact, they do that, that makes him an unrestricted free agent. That means last year's leading rusher will be out there for the highest bidder. That's just so crazy. That's just so crazy. They pretty much saying, we don't want him anymore. If it's going to be like this, we don't want him anymore. Why the Raiders would do that, I have no idea. It's one thing you trying to save money or whatever. You, come on. What? Really? Well, like you said, or like, you know, a number of people pointed out, you know, if you're throwing his stats in with everybody else, it's one thing. But there's certain running backs who have long, productive careers, you know, and they give, they give you everything they got during the entire career. They're not all like. Right. And who's to say he's not going to be one of them? Who's I to think say if Barkley anybody would, he would them. be. That's yeah. the thing. That's what that's what I think. So yeah, you're absolutely right about that. All right, Benny, that's it for me. That's it for me. I'm good. Peace. Peace.